Okay, I'll just run through who we've, we've got here. Um, really appreciate these guys' time and, and being put in the spotlight like this. Don't be nervous, guys. There won't be an Oscars moment, I promise. <laughs> uh, so we've got um, Peter Ambrose, who is Managing Director of the Partnership, uh, based in Guildford, Surrey. We've got David Bridge, Head of Conveyancing at Kitely Solicitors from Paul in Dorset. We have Angie Cooney, Managing Director of C Residential, <coughs> Single Branch Agency in Staffordshire. We've got Glynis, who is Managing Director of Hunter's Property Group based in York and also Chair of the Upfront Information Group. We've got Natalie Moore, who is Director of A Conveyancing, a four-branch conveyancer based in Staffordshire. We've got Charlie Perdios, Managing Director of Anthony Pepe, which is four estate agent branches in London, and I think one in Hertfordshire. So that's the panel. So it's over to Ian and Rob. Thank you very much indeed. So we've heard, we've heard a, an hour of how wonderful and fluffy it really is out there, haven't we? Um, but I say that may not be the case. So let's go straight to yourself, uh, Peter. What, um, what are your views on do agents and conveyancers actually respect each other? Um, it depends. We've built our business on 100% referrals. Two-thirds of all our work comes from estate agents. So clearly, they must respect the work that we do. That said, we've noticed over the last six months that it's become a lot more difficult. There's no two ways about it. Um, and that's very clear. We, we talk about lack of stock. We talk about increasing pressures. And this is definitely coming down the line. Um, and do we find sometimes that agents do get a bit difficult? They do, but it's clearly because there's more pressure. And I think there's a little bit... On the one hand, we're getting more work than ever before from a wider range of agents. So we're obviously doing something right. But what we are finding is there are... We're having more difficult conversations in the last few months, no question about it. More, and more difficult conversations about what? Um, why is it taking so long? Right. What can we be doing? We need to be working quicker. We need to get more deals through. And I agree. Uh, we've seen, we've been flatlining in terms of timescales since November. The end of the stamp duty uh, holiday didn't have the results that everyone thought it would, ha would, would happen. And so deals are actually getting slower. Um, we, ma we monitor our deals very closely. And they've, they've jumped up to 16 weeks, which we've never seen before in the history of the company. And so when you get a call from an agent um, that is they're vociferous in their approach, saying, for God's sake, man, why is it taking so bloody long? Do you respect the fact that they're asking that question for the customer, or do you just think that they're just being obnoxious? No, it's always the customer. No question at all. Um, right. Absolutely no question. In fact, I got one yesterday afternoon. Um, it was quite a nice email, but sort of not nice. Uh, it said, um, look, you know, don't want to bring this to you, but I've had a very unproductive conversation with your colleague. Right. Um, uh, we've got a, a deal that uh, the client wants to exchange this week. Really sorry about it, but I'm getting it in the neck. Yeah. Which was a, a lovely email to get in that I then checked, and we only got the management pack last Friday. So realistically, um, is it going to happen this week? No, but the agents who we do work with did say, I hate to ask this, but I'm really getting it from the client. Okay. Okay. Rob? So, ask the same question of David then. Do agents and conveyances respect each other? I think they do in part. But I think that um, there's a difference between ignorance and respect. And it seems to come down to that. I think those that have been around a while get to know when you're talking to somebody who you can respect or not. Respect is earned. It's not, um, you, it's not given, if you like. You have to earn it. And I think that some of, the, some of the conversations, a bit like the ones Peter had, that is a respectful email mm. that, that you had, and, and I applaud it, and it's the right way to go about it. But would that have happened at the junior negotiator, um, youngish conveyancer dealing with the job itself? I, I wonder if it would. And I think that there is a lot in what Tony was saying about going out to get to know people and so forth. That was something we had time to do, and you two both exemplified that those of us that are old enough now to get to come to these things get to do that. But actually, how many of us have left all our staff back in the office churning away? They don't get the time to do that. They certainly don't want to go and do it in their very few off hours of an evening. So I, th I, think, I think the way respect is earned is, is changing. And I think if you add money into it as well, it becomes very difficult. Um, 
So I think there is respect, and there certainly should be respect. But I think, you know, when you get somebody saying to you, I've been doing this job for five years, and I've never had to get a management back, that's not respect. So do you think then there's more respect between the experienced um, estate agents and conveyances than there is between the younger, less Absolutely. experienced one? Absolutely. And, and how are we going to tackle that? What we try and do is to mentor something from the conveyances side is to try and mentor my conveyances that there are ways to, to earn that respect, to get to know them. It is about the communication that people were talking about. But it, somebody's got to start it. Somebody's got to pick up the phone, preferably before they're moaning at you. Just very quickly, because we've got to move on because we're running a little bit late. Um, is there enough young blood coming into the conveyancing profession? We might ask that of the estate agents in a minute, but do you think there's enough coming in? No. No, I think, it's, I think that's a big danger. And that's going to be a problem in the future? Because good conveyances need experience. So if you're not coming in at the bottom, you're not learning for long enough to do what you can do and what I can do and hold a chain together. So what would make it a more attractive job for young people? And don't say cut out the agents, because that's not what we're here no, for. I'm not going to say cut out the agents. I think, I think everyone has to calm down. Um, I do think everyone has to calm down. Uh, we're losing people to the out, out of the industry that have come in, because it's just, I don't want to be shouted at anymore. Uh, I do a difficult job, and I don't, I don't want this. And I think that's really sad, because I've lived and breathed the profession for the last 30 years. I love it. So, so when, we get, when, we, when we start to delve beneath the surface, there is a lack of understanding. Yep lack of communication, and lack of respect. Because that's what I've heard is that the, that's what I've heard is that I had the management, I told them that I've only got the management pack last week. Well, actually, there could have been a communication to say to you, oh, we've only just got the management pack. That could have happened a week before, couldn't it? In terms of getting on the front foot. So heads up rugby, Sir Clive Woodward always talked about, and we talked about marginal gains, didn't we, 1%. Um, and the comment of um, people don't get the time. One of, whenever I have, whenever I hear that statement, the question I always ask is, do you find time to put petrol in your car? Mm. Yes, why? Because it runs out if you don't. And it could be electric in today's world, couldn't it? So you find things that are a necessity, but you choose not to find things when it's an option. Yeah, but my car's sitting on the drive with no diesel at the moment because I haven't had time to go and fill it up. There you go. <laughs> so you had, to, you had to go through the pain of the consequences and get here by other means. I mean. by bus this morning. Yeah, there you go. Then. <laughs> That's good. Angie, so we know each other. You What's your take on this, please? Um, do they respect each other? No. No, not at all. I, cannot, I can't respect people in terms of solicitor firms when I ring, if I ring a um, panel solicitor and they change as many change, times as I change my underwear, it's always getting passed on to the next person. It really does feel like a conveyor belt. You ring one person and somebody, it seems, in, in my Perception, humble opinion, yeah. is that somebody's opened the envelope and stamped it and it's moved up to the next desk, and somebody else stamped that, and then when it gets to where it needs to get to, we're talking weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I know that they, um, I know solicitors, I only deal really with the solicitors in my town, yeah. um, and I make that a business decision. I don't do it for money, I don't get referrals, because I want to be able to pick the phone up. I don't do the pub thing, it's not really me, I don't do lunches, I just want the job to be done. I want them to ring me and say, we've got a problem, come and have a look, they'll meet me, we'll go and have a look at a boundary dispute. And I know it's done, it's about understanding. And that's what's the most frustrating part. Everybody, prop tech, and I'm sorry I'm here with everybody here, but I'm sick up to the back teeth of it. I just want to get the job done. I'm paid to sell houses and I'm really good at it. Mm. I am sick of everything. Cut it all out for God's sake. Talk, talk, that's all they need to do. There you go. That's my take on it. Do they respect each other? Don't, no. don't hold back, Andrew. No, I won't. I, I, I think we got the clear picture from Angie then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Glynis, over to you, please. Well, I think I would be very disappointed if people in our organisation did not respect anybody that they actually dealt with, because I think it's a basic requirement when you're dealing with anyone at work. Um, do they always get on with conveyances? I would say... Probably not always. Um, I absolutely agree with both David and Angie in the sense that respect has to be earned. And I think tech absolutely has its place. But it is an enabler. It is an accelerator. It is absolutely no substitute you know, for people talking 
um, and especially, you know, all business is about people, but that's especially true of the property industry. It is absolutely, you know, about people. But, but I'd just like to come back to the point that you asked about, well, are there enough young people coming into property? And you, David, said you didn't think there were. I, I do think that there is a basic problem in the industry in that I don't think estate agents charge enough and I don't think conveyances charge enough either. Be because this is a customer's, you know, our customer's greatest asset. And it's not, you know, like buy cheap, buy twice if you're going out for a pair of shoes. You know, this is really serious. And I actually think all of us could do a much better job in explaining to customers just how important this is. Have you seen fees go up in the last two years from estate agents and from conveyances? Um, well, it depends who you deal with, of course. You know, I was talking to an agent um, before and, you know, there's, I think one of the uh, real tragedies of estate agency especially is that somebody can set up today as an estate agent, they don't have to have any training, they don't have to have, you know, go through any sort of, um, you know, uh, precursor, they can, they can start straight away and as far as they're going to, concerned you can see it in the press we're going to do things differently and we're only going to charge half a percent you know that's not or good. free in some cases or oh, free absolutely yes but don't let's go we won't there. mention them no yeah <laughs> but um and so i think that most agents most good agents will really work hard to get a good fee for what they do uh, as will you know conveyances but i do think it's a it's a major thing and I think we could all do better in, you know, going locally and nationally to explain this is how important this job is and what we're doing for you as a, as a customer. And then we'll get young people wanting to come in because we can pay the wages that they, they look for in this day and age. It is, it's the opposite, whatever the opposite of a virtuous circle, it's the opposite, isn't it? But it's a yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy almost. Mm. Is it possible for conveyances to say, sod it, we're going to charge more? We do. You do? We did. We, we put our prices up. But it is a, it's a problem um, for the industry because the people running businesses, in our experience, dealing with other lawyers, is the people running it don't have the courage to put up their prices. The only way you can put up prices is to deliver good service. Right. And unless you deliver good service, you can't put up your prices. How do you deliver good service? You keep your caseloads down. Yeah? We see some horrendous caseloads. And <coughs> that's the core of the problem. You've seen people signing up for panels, doing work at £300 a pop. Well, of course you've got to run 100 cases. It's not rocket yeah. science. And this is the fundamental problem. Yeah. You've got to deliver on the service, but you've got to be able to take that step. Put up your prices, deliver on the service, and make sure that that circle, and that's what we've done over the it's last it's 10 years. It's the investment. It's the yeah. definition of You've an investment. You've got to commit. You've yeah. got to commit to it. Yeah. And yeah. You, you, your return on investment is seen over a period of time. Mm. So it's not just put my prices up today and everyone will pay it. Yeah. Um, you know, you lose work very quickly that way. So I, I think it's uh, prices can and do go up. And I absolutely agree with Peter. If you want to give the sort of service we're talking about, the fewer cases you have, the more invested you can become in the mm. fewer clients you're looking after. Mm. Um, and I think that's entirely true too. That's not going to fit everyone's business model, mind you, and therefore there's a differentiator. Well, there's nothing wrong with a differentiator in the market. You know, as clients should be able to choose. I want, the, <laughs> I want to just go through the quickest and cheapest way forward. That's one option for them. Or they can have it done differently and they might get cross with one service and not with the other. But they'll get less cross with that service because they know there was an alternative they chose not to have. Mm. So I don't see a problem with a differentiator. I think it's just up to businesses to decide what level of service they want to offer and to do then what you need to do to deliver that service at that cost. Mm. Does but anybody in the audience know um, the costing model in Germany? What agents charge and what conveyances charge? I don't know the answer to it. I just, <laughs> I just found it really interesting that they're a month and we're five months. If, um, if, if anybody cares to have a look on Google and see if they can find it out, that would be quite, quite useful. I know in Holland it's similar and it's 6%. Right. And the agent and the lawyer does the same job. France right. takes a bit longer, but they're about 10% because the notaire gets paid by everyone. He does. Yeah. yeah. Which is a nice job. It it's is. only one of those. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Natalie, what's your view? Um, I would probably second some of the comments that Peter made. 
Um, it's been a really interesting morning and it's been a really positive morning. And here, here in the Howe Conveyancing started back in the 80s and the collaboration there then, and now where we are now, recognising the collaborations needed now. Where's it gone terribly wrong in between and why have we in a result now where we're so short of conveyances? Because in my view, that's what's slowing transactions down. People are leaving the industry because of high caseloads. Firms are taking on too much work and not capping work. So the service isn't getting delivered. And the knock-on effect of that is Angie's impression that no one respects anybody because the relationship's broken and it's not working. So from my experience, there's been a lack of respect between the two professions as a whole. Within my practice, which is a newly founded practice, we've got great relationships with agents because we've collaborated from day one because we've recognised what's needed, which is service and speed, and we can only do that by managing caseloads, encouraging good conveyances to join us and give the service. So we try and make it an attractive pa package to get new conveyances on board, which attracts estate agents to work with us. We don't offer no completion, no fee, and we resist panel work because that's what's led the drive to the bottom in the first place or over time. So we've worked very early on from the start in service, staff engagement, and now we're moving forward to the tech side of it to get that right, which Peter's firm does re already very well. So it's looking even how we can collaborate as firms together. Um, I'm coming to see Peter's firm next month, but that's, it goes back to collaboration and momentum and working together. So just you know, keeping it all positive and not looking at what's got us here or how bad it is or the drive to the bottom on fees, recognising where we are now and what needs to be done. We now, need to attract... Actually, as a new conveyancer then, as a new firm, how did you create those estate agent contracts in the first place? Well, it's a new firm, but I'm not a new conveyancer. I've been in the industry 20 years, so a lot of those relationships are already in place. So they went with you? Uh, some went with me, Which yeah. Is, it, it's a personal relationship. Me. Yeah, I think only 30% of our work, looking back uh, last year, was referral work because we tried to resist referral fees and panel work. So some of those would be um, existing clients, friends and family, recommenders. And then when we've recruited... Um, one of my co-directors is in the room today. She's brought with her her own following as well. So people will follow the service. They're not so concerned about price. And that's why price has to be valued for the service that you get in. Mm. So we've had long-term relationships follow us. We've gone with good, competent staff, made that attractive for them to join us. Yeah. Okay. Thank and then you. trained new, young talent up. Because a lot of parts of the conveyancing process are very admin based and can be taught and with the new generation coming in and the new skill and you know the IT savvy it's it's great yeah. can I just come in there I think that all the solicitors out there may think that it's all about the fee and it isn't because I know when I'm talking to my vendors and I'm sat in front of them and I'll sit there and go go with this company here and the reason is is that I know that they will get you this through in the and they'll talk to you, and they will, they've got a good level of service, blah de blah It is all about service. It really is. Because when... Sorry, I'm just going to take over two seconds. <laughs> what annoys me the most is the fact that when I'm talking to a client, and that client, and remember, we see them right from the beginning, so they could... Any reason, the multitude of reasons why they're moving, it's very personal. So if, if it's taking five months to go over, and he's about to get repossessed, for example... And it's very real. It's a real emotive thing. And if we, um, I'm going to use the word balls up, sorry if I'm not supposed to. We balls up and giving it to the wrong person. And we've got some junior conveyancer who really doesn't understand and has no relationship with us. That's damaging my reputation more than anything. I will always, I don't care what, they, what you charge, charge more. If, if charging more means that it gets my client where, or our clients where they want them to be, then it's worth it. And we rarely come across the, um, the solicitor. We've chosen this solicitor because they're cheap, Angie. We've chosen the solicitor and they, nine times out of ten, go with the people that we recommend as well. So it is really worth getting relationships, of course, with estate agents who 
arrest the winners or do the job or that you trust really. Mm. And I think that's a brilliant point you've just made. Sorry, Rob. And just to link it back, so when I was MD of Countrywide, I had to use conveyance at the CCS, but the way, because, it, because I had to, I had no choice. Mm. The way that we delivered it in the South was that everybody signed up for their premium service. So we knew that there were less caseloads. The customer paid more, but they ex we explained exactly the difference between the service. Mm. You're paying more, but the benefit to you is this. Yeah. And well, it's a rhetorical question to all the conveyances out there. Do you have a different tiered, tiered costing model? Rhetorical question. I don't know, do you guys, or is it just whatever? It We're flat fee. Right. We're flat fee because it's easy to sell. We're not cheap. I mean, we start about 1,500 pounds. Um, and it's quite interesting. And we win about 52, 53% of what we quote. Yeah. Um, you can do it. Why? The only reason we can charge those fees is because all of our work's referred. That's the only reason. Because if people just go and Google, they can easily, you know, quite often, you know, we'll get people saying, well, I've, I've done a comparison and you're £300 more than someone else. And we're like, but the agent said this and the broker said you should and I've got a friend that you should. <coughs> Otherwise, you just wouldn't be able to charge those sorts of fees. Cost is an issue in the absence of value. Yeah. Well, people don't put value on what we do. I mean, everyone knows that. We're kidding ourselves if we say, if only we explained ourselves better, then they'd know what they're paying for. Utter nonsense. Yeah, people don't want to use us. They don't particularly like us. We're a distress purchase. Um, so therefore, it becomes recommended, then you maintain the fees. Mm. Make it a motive. Make it about the home. But we don't have that conversation we don't at that point. Right. Um, and Angie's kind of proved that. With, it, it's quite a possessive view you have of the client. <laughs> in, your, in your view, it's your client. Yeah. I would argue it's my client too. Um, right. And no, but, but, but it's, quite, it's quite a divisive view if you do have to go outside your small circle. And somebody acting on the other side of something who's outside of that mm -hmm. has got some issues there. Um, not least because also you can't have a client who's both the buyer and the seller. They can't both be your client. And agents do tend to forget that, I think, sometimes, that their job is to act for the seller, mm -hmm. not for the buyer. And therefore, we've got to actually tell the buyer they might say that because it's in their interest, not because... Not saying it's your interest, I mean your client's interest. Mm. So we've got to act as a barrier to that. And so that possessiveness, I think, can, can create some issues. But I agree, I agree with you on the whole that, and that fees can be, can be put forward, whatever you like, but nobody knows at the point we do it. Mm. They only know after the event whether we did it right. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least then, Charlie. Charlie, I first met you about 15 years ago when I was peddling my home information pack business. That's right. And what I want to know is, why the hell don't you look any older now than you did 15 years ago? <laughs> what are you taking, mate? Tell me afterwards. I'll but first you. of all, I'll answer the que question that we've put to the rest of the panel. Well, really interesting. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be much of a, a panel discussion if, it, if the answer was yes, I think. <laughs> um, I, I think from, from an agent's point of view, you know, it's a million dollar question. You, you ask every month what is going to exchange. Um, and we choose the conveyances we work with because of the respect we have with them mm. and the relationship we have with them. And I think we definitely, definitely need to work on relationships. It was really interesting hearing both you, know, you and Ian's relationship um, 30 years ago. And I don't think that really happens anymore. And I think the people that are in the industry now, you know, we, we, we email more, we text more, don't really build those relationships. So it probably makes it a lot more difficult to have those relationships where you go out for dinner, you go to the pub, it doesn't make it easier. But from our point of view, from an agent's point of view, all we can do is try and improve um, and educate the people within my business. I can't affect what you guys do in conveyancing. Um, I, all I can do is train my guys to know the process a bit better, understand what you guys do, you know, so they're not ringing you um, for asking pointless questions, they're ringing you and seeing if they actually can help the process. You know, I, there's a lot we can talk about, especially when it comes to technology and, and how the industry's changed. But estate agents can help conveyances, you know, especially when it comes to the negotiation side. But I think definitely from an estate agent's point of view, we can definitely understand the process better. And I think that will come from training from educating our people a bit better. I like the idea of you know, sending someone to, to one of the offices and really understanding what you guys can do. So I think that's where collaboration starts, where we really understand what the other side does more so. If we can do that, then I think uh, you know, there'll be a huge wins and those small little marginal gains, because we don't work on big margins, do we? 
there's small margins there. So if we can obviously improve those margins by speeding up the process, you know, Tony mentioned before, speed is, is the key, isn't it? We all want deals to go through quicker. Speed kills the opposition. Yeah. Well, we both only get paid on completion. Yeah. So it's not just the agents yeah. Yeah. that are waiting for the final line, it's the conveyances no, too. No. But does bowing to the client's but desire speed for speed... does kill deals. Yeah. Does, there does, is that does saying. Require, does deals. bowing to that desire for speed actually create the very problem we're talking about? Yeah. We focus too much on speed and not about doing the job well and supporting the client from both angles. So well, not really respect. when you're talking about if it's taking five months. I mean, fortunately, it didn't take five months no, in, I agree. in a lot of hours. But, but, you know, if it's taking five months, that, that is absolutely unacceptable to a, to a, a customer. And I, I do think, I think the point was made, you know, before with the presentation, which was about, you know, make sure that each party has got their expectations. And sometimes that does mean saying to a customer, actually, I can't tell you what you want to hear but you need to hear this because this is what's going to happen because of whatever the circumstances are. Might be a chain, might be something particular with that property. Uh, but then that comes back down to respect anyway. You know, if you're dealing with somebody, whoever you're dealing with, be that a customer, a supplier, you've got to have respect for that other person. Because if you don't, you should be doing something else. Um, because you've got to be fair to people, you've got to be open with people, and that doesn't matter, you know, what job they do or, or where, they're, where they're from. In Ian, uh, unless I'm wrong, I think we've got some roving mics. Um, is anybody out there want to ask a question or um, make a comment? I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew, I've got a question for you, because you're um, beautifully honest, as per usual. Uh, have you ever reached out to one of your local firms and had a meeting with the, with the owner? Always. You do, yeah? Always. So, so if you want to see four. the change, you've got to be the change. Yeah, there's yeah? four in my town. Right. And I've met up with them all. And yeah. if I don't think they're doing a good job, I'll pick the phone up and tell them hmm. and well, explain why that. and the reasons for it. Yeah. And then I don't refer to them until that gets sorted because yeah. there's no point. Because I don't charge or... And, and does the convincer or the lawyer give you feedback about, hang on a second, Andrew, you sent this memorandum of sale out and it's shit? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> <laughs> Self-preservation. That, right? that could happen, couldn't no, it? No, no, it could happen. I know that you'd take it No, I'm quite happy. Well, and I'm you? really not, I'm, I'm not that person. You know, I'll yeah, take know. it on the chin. And you know, you, do you provide chain sheets? Yes. You do. But yes. most agents don't, I think, do they? Because we find them really useful as conveyors. They are useful, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, is there a question at the back? I vaguely see Ben. On the Glynis made a point about tech being an enabler and that it's all about relationships. How does the panel feel about the fact that potentially the shortcomings in technology are the reasons that the relationships can be fraught between agent and conveyancer, where actually technology could potentially cut down a lot of those conversations that go nowhere and make everybody grumpy? Who would like to answer? I, I think sometimes our over-reliance on technology yeah. is what uh, causes us to have problems with our relationships anyway. Um, that's what I find anyway within, within, within agency at the moment. Um, your best friend is the phone still. The best technology I still think is the telephone. And I think if we use that a little bit more... Uh, rather than firing back emails, you know, and it mm. can become a bit of one-upmanship, I think then uh, there would be, the relationships would improve and there would be more respect. But, you know, it, it's difficult because, as you guys have alluded to as well, it's, you know, new blood coming into the industry, people a bit less experienced, you know, they might have an agent calling up just annoying a conveyancer and that's just going to wind you guys up and then uh, not answer any calls and but it, but it is interesting because I mean I come from a background where we used a lot of technology and we had years and years ago sort of online portals for clients to check in see what they did and every time a client every time a conveyancer left a file he left a note and that was published up on the website so that they could see the last touch point and see the history of the touch points all that did when we started sending emails out to them saying you've you've had a note you know have a look and see what's happening is generate another phone call yeah. Um, at the end of the day. And we did, a, we did a really interesting sweep. We did a forced password change to see how many clients were using the portal. 
And the answer is about 4% hadn't changed their password. Sorry, 96% hadn't changed their password after three months. So I think these, we thought we were doing a really great thing and keeping everyone involved and up to date. Turns out that that wasn't what the reality was. And those updates went to the agent as well, so the agent could see what was going on. But again, they didn't, nobody used that. So technology being an enabler doesn't cut out the first, the face-to-face -face contact. And it doesn't cut out, as Peter said. I think, um, the first, sorry, if I just say something, the first two weeks of earlier on this year, I can't remember, is it Country Watch? Who was the platform that went down? Simplify. Oh my God, that was horrific. Because all these people that were saying to me, you know, you told me, Angie, to go with Mrs. Smith down the road, but actually I know that my searches with da 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 giving me all this itemised thing, bore, bore. He then went, I can't get in touch with anybody, no one's taking my calls. I really wish I should have gone with Mrs. Smith down the road. But Mrs. Mrs. Smith could have been had a cyber attack against her. Yeah, so. it, she it, could. I get, I've got to say... Um, I think this is at the heart of the problem. I get really irritated when people say technology is not the solution. It 100% is the solution. It's how you use it. And frankly, I interview and recruit a lot of lawyers, all right? Anyone that tells you they use decent technology, any lawyers, all right, they're talking nonsense, all right? And I know this firsthand from people that I employ, okay? Technology is shocking out there, okay? Um, it's absolutely abysmal. No wonder it doesn't work because they don't use it. The fact that you say that people didn't use a portal, we don't use email. We haven't used email for five years. Why? Because it's for fraudsters, okay? We force people to use the technology. They do as they're told, okay? People say to me, what's your use, you know, how many people use your portal, yeah? I tell you, 100%, because otherwise we wouldn't work with them. And where people make a mistake is they somehow think that, oh, you know, it's a magic bullet. It's <coughs> not, but if you don't deploy it, then there's no future. We're not growing new conveyances. The quality is going down. The only solution is improving the information from technology, but it's beyond the wit of most law firm owners to actually deploy that. Peter, in Peter our when you walked in this morning, you said to me, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> and I, I, knew, I knew at one point you were going to spark into life, and you've just done that. <laughs> do, do, you ha do you have um, any kind of personal relationship with your estate agent contacts, though? Oh, we do, um, but the reality is, and, and you made the point earlier, today, most agents, what they want, they don't want to go down the pub. No disrespect to you older gentlemen, but they don't want to go down the pub, okay? They want the deal through. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're not in it anymore, Ian. <laughs> um, it's only because I'm the same age. Um, they really, what they want is they want minimal amount of contact, and that's in our experience. We've spent years going out talking to agents, and what do they say to us? That's great and all that, but what we really want is you on the end of the phone to pick it up, pick up, and get on with it. And the relationship is really important, but that doesn't come from going out and having cosy, I don't know, takeaways together or something like that. It's being available, talking to them. It works. I only any, went any more, I fancy any more, Rob's wife, that's all. <laughs> I work with them. <laughs> any more questions or comments from the other... Yeah, we're, we're done on time, Patrick. It, one or two more, maybe. Simon, you're in charge. I think we should have a coffee, actually. Yeah. Oh, oh gutted. Yeah. One more. One more. <laughs> this could be the question that, or the answer to the, to the problems. I am um, sure, like a lot of the people in the room here, actually, there's about 110 things I'd like to say, but we haven't got the time. Um, but hopefully it's a great start here today, so thank you for holding this. Can we talk about um, a couple of things? Elephant in the room, referral fees. There are agency firms who take £100, no referral fee, £200, £400. In most cases, the client they're selling or buying doesn't know they're paying a referral fee, despite uh, it's worded in any way. And um, obviously then the poor conveyancing firms are receiving two, three, four hundred pounds less or cutting their fee or whatever they're doing, or the client's just paying more. But, um, so I know I'm, I'm anti-referral fees, I'm promoted by hand up. That doesn't mean I, I don't understand why they're there. In my old firm, uh, we used to have a referral fee. It was a small referral fee, but we did. So I just want to touch the subject that a lot of you may find difficult to talk about, but it is a problem. I, and, and we talked, I almost fell off my chair when you said your average fee was 1,500 pounds. I'm not sure where that is or where you're based, but if I tell you, um, for reasons I won't bore you with now, why I know all this information, um, that um, there are a, there are conveyancing firms out there accepting business at three hundred and fifty pounds a time, three hundred and fifty pounds per case, if, and that's at property sales at two, three, four hundred thousand pounds. And if you just remember, a case the national average property price is about two hundred and fifty thousand. So that means the average person is getting a three hundred and fifty pounds, four hundred pounds service in that case. Um, I'm a director of a, 
of a, a state agency, of a conveyancing firm, and of a charter, firm of charter surveyors. Um, my charter surveyors would go out and spend, be, spent more, be paid more money to spend two or three hours inspecting a property than the conveyancing firms are paid spending three months trying to get the sale through. It's just bonkers. Right, so in true EastEnders fashion, I think we end it there and we'll talk about it in the next group. Dum, dum, dum. Do, right? do, 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 do. It's a great question, by the way. It's a great question. I'm just very conscious of time. So, um, ladies and gents, thank you all so very much. Really, really good session. Some great honesty. And it sets it up really nicely for one of the sessions this afternoon. So thank you very much.